Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 279 of Ask Dave. And in this uh, continuing uh, stay at home special, we're going to take a look at a device that I just placed on order that will put a tap on the reference station radio, the IC7300, so that I can feed an RF output from that to my uh, software-defined radio, an SDR Play uh, RSP1A, so that uh, I can uh, look at the full screen here of the SDR uh, display and get a much bigger pan adapter. In fact, I can look at different signals while uh, the radio over here is doing its thing. I initially resisted doing this because of the price. This is actually a little uh, package that you put inside the radio that taps into various feeds. Uh, it's expensive and uh, I wasn't going to get it because of that, but uh, at the last live stream um, you convinced me to do it. I mean, after all, I have the money from you for channel funds to do exactly this kind of thing, to purchase an object like this and to test it, see how it works, and uh, let you see how it works and give a recommendation on it. So with that, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the things about it. It appears on the DX Engineering website. It's called a Radio Analog PTRX 7300 IF Interface Module, and um, it's the pen adapter module. Look at the price there. It's $239, $240. Uh, and worse, it's actually uh, backordered, uh, but we're going to go ahead and do it. I just want to walk through uh, some of the pictures that went along with it. This up here at the top is the 7300, and what is being put into that is just this little uh, circuit board right here, the PTRX 7300. This happens to reroute a cable or two to in here where the uh, input trace is, and note that it's a high Z. High Z means high impedance. So it's not bogging down the circuit in here, but rather it's just sort of watching silently and uh, it's got its own amplifier and then there's an RF out connection at the bottom. It steals power from the external uh, tuner connector uh, which you can hook up to uh, an a, a, a ICOM tuner um, and it does not eliminate that conductivity or connect, uh, does not eliminate that capability. This can still work. It's uh, run through here so that you can still see it. It's just taking power from that. This is what all comes in it. There is a um, little circuit board and uh, the necessary connectors. And it's quite small. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom the um, that's where the RF is, and then this is where the antenna uh, tuner connector will be. You don't have to connect it up. By the way, this modification is entirely reversible. So you can just take it out and without changing anything. Nothing soldered, nothing like that. This is the bottom side of the connector there, or the circuit board. Uh, this is the cable that is used to swipe power from the external antenna tuner. Uh, here is a cable that uh, replaces a cable inside the radio. Uh, this right here is the connector that will go to your software-defined radio. And this is what it looks like coming out the back. Now you don't need to put the tuner cable back in if you're not going to use it. Um, if you aren't going to use it, I would suggest putting it in a plastic bag, labeling it very clearly, and if possible, attaching that to a coax or power cord or something like that so it doesn't get lost. And then another cable goes over to the software-defined radio. And here's just another picture. Now let's look at the uh, company that makes this. It's radioanalog.com. They make one product, which is the PTRX7300. And there's a couple different ways that you can install it. One, to use the band select filters in the IC7 
uh, IC7300. Uh, and then the alternative installation where you bypass all that filtering so you can get the entire RF uh, output of the thing. And this is the one I'm going to try. And they give you just a little bit uh, bigger pictures. This is the unit right here, just right in here. Um, it's not very big. It taps power right there. So this power comes out over to there. And then the uh, antenna uh, tuner connector is still right there. It's very professionally done. Um, and this shows uh, like what the circuit board actually looks like. So you're getting uh, quite a bit going on here, extremely wideband preamps and, and uh, switching diodes and so on. Um, it's a sophisticated product. It talks about how there's no signal degradation, misspelled, but degradation. Um, if you power split, you lose 3 dB. This is, for example, if you put one of those switches in front of it, that's, that's called the SDR switch, so you can um, disconnect the uh, SDR when you're transmitting, so on. But here, you don't lose any power because it does a high impedance tap. Uh, you can use the front end of the filter, the filters of the radio and so on. Uh, it is possible that if you tune your SDR radio, you can t be tuning the ICOM 7300 at the same time. Um, and you can be tuning to a different frequency on the SDR than you are on the ICOM 7300 if you want to. Um, and it's got all these other wonderful features in here. Okay, so this just shows what it looks like. So what's going to happen is uh, I've put the order into DX Engineering. The thing won't be available till March 6th, and then it's going to take another week to ship after that. And they say that because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, they are a little behind in their shipping. So, uh, when it comes, it comes, and I will connect it up and uh, give you all a full report. So that's what's happening here tonight. Uh, please take a moment to check out uh, dcastler.com support and look at different ways that you can support the channel so I can do things like this, get these odd little things and see how they work. And until we next meet, which is hopefully tomorrow, 73.